Hello all, this is Santosh and welcome to Tech Design. So today I'm going to discuss about interview questions on Unigraphics NX application. This has been a most requested video through comments or through mails. Okay, So I'm going to prepare a playlist where I'm going to upload all the interview questions and answers. So you can just go to that playlist and check out all the previous and future videos. So I have divided this topic into three sections. So first couple of videos will be on interview questions for beginners. So beginners in the sense just you have just completed your degree or you have a couple of years of experience on manufacturing or in any CAD tool. So after that there will be an uh, intermediate kind of uh, interview questions where you will have minimum of four to six years of experience on NX or any other application. And finally then there will be an advanced level of uh, you know interview questions that will be on more than six years of experience on NX. So in all videos I don't want to give you only questions and answer. So I will just try to give you some more explanation with NX application so that you can able to understand better okay so in this video as i said you this is going to be a um, beginner kind of question so all basic questions will be available on this session okay so now you can see here this is the first question so what do you mean by gateway application in ug so when it comes to our definition you can see here in graphics is containing many applications such as modeling nx sheet metal shape studio drafting manufacturing assemblies and etc when you open any graphics and create a new file gateway will help you to choose the required workbench so what do you mean by this one so let's go to a particular nx so now you can see here this is going to be our nx file suppose once you open nx in the first time so you are going to go to file and new so as soon as you hit new file, there will be a window. So this window, we are going to call it as gateway. So here you can able to select whether it is a model or routing application or drafting, or if you're creating a simulation, manufacturing, whatever the application that you want to use that you can able to select in this window. So this is going to be our gateway of application. So where you can able to select your required application, okay? So you're going to select your required application and you can just click OK. So this is going to be your gateway of application. OK, so the next question will be on what is master model concept? So as a definition, the same model is used for conceptual design to the drafting assembly analysis and manufacturing. The idea behind this model is if you change anything in a master model, it will reflect in all other applications. So suppose you have a master model, say for example, any car door, suppose you have a car door as a master model, suppose if anybody is changing in the car door, suppose somebody is making a hole in that particular car door. So that will be reflected into its drawing as well as its manufacturing file, as well as it will be updated in the assembly as well as in analysis so that is what the meaning of master model concept so i have already made a video you can see here this is going to be so you can see here this is going to be our uh, drafting master model concept video i will give this link in the description or in the comment section so you can just go to this particular link and check out this video so that you will have better understanding on master model concept okay so now the third question will be what do you mean by team center so as a definition, it is a PDM product data management software, which helps the organization effectively control the design, development, analysis, manufacturing throughout the product life cycle. Okay. So what do you mean by this one? Say we have a car door, say for example, it will be Creta. Okay. So, and then 2014 model Creta will have a different kind of door handle. Suppose in the 2016 model or in the 2022 model, the same handle will be modified and it will be changed a little bit so in that case all the information that is legacy model and in the future models all the revisions uh, and whatever the design and development analysis everything will be managed under one software so that is called as product data management which is called as team center when it comes to any graphics nx okay so now you can see here what is sketching plane so as a definition to create a sketch you must associate the sketch feature to a planar object we can select a face or a datum plane 
this plane is known as sketching plane so now let me go into annex so now i'm going to show you what is sketching plane say for example this is a model or if you don't have a model you will have a datum coordinate system so you can just go to sketch and when you go into the sketch you need to attach the particular sketch onto 2d plane either it may be a plane or a face on that particular any model or it may be a datum coordinate system so now i'm going to select this particular face you can see here this model face i'm going to select and i'll just click ok so now you can see here whatever this face it is going to be your sketching plane so that is what the meaning of sketching plane so whenever you are going to create a sketch you are going to associate that sketch to a planar object planar object is nothing but it may be a face it may be a datum plane or it may be a coordinate system so this plane whatever you are selecting that is going to be your sketching plane okay so now let's move on to next question so now you can see here how to completely constrain a circle in sketcher so this is going to be a tricky question so there will be a two answers for this so always the interviewer will expect these two questions from you suppose if you give single answer so it will not be satisfied okay so suppose if you have a circle you can see here if the circle is created in the coordinate system so radial dimension is given to constrain it completely if not the additional horizontal and vertical dimensions are given so you can see here this is the circle so how you are going to constrain a circle suppose if this circle is created exactly in the origin of sketch so in that case so you just need a radial dimension or diameter for this to completely constrain suppose in another case if this circle is created at some distance from this origin so in that case apart from this radial distance you need this horizontal distance and vertical distance so then only you can able to completely constrain this circle so now let's move on to the next question so what are the layers in nx and how many are there so layers is a utility that helps to move object to respective layer categories and in future we can use them to show or hide objects based on the categories and there are totally 256 layers in the annex so now let's move on to annex so now you can see here i'm going to finish this sketch and you can see there are a lot of features here suppose if you go to part navigator you can see here there is a datum sketch and all these are there so i have already made a video on layers suppose you, i will just give the link in the description on layers and how it works so you can for more detailed you know information you can just go to that video so now as per question you can see here suppose you have a sketchers here you can see all these sketches are available and you want to keep them in one layer say now i'm going to select them and i'll just go to menu format and move to layer so i will just give it as a 20 as a layer okay i'll just give 20 and i'll just click okay so now whatever the sketchers i have selected they have been completely moved to layer 20 so in future suppose if you want to hide them you can see here now they are shown so suppose if you want to hide them hit ctrl l and you can see here this is the layer you can just switch off this once you switch off this whatever the objects that are there in that particular layer will be hidden so this is the use of layers so you are going to categorize all your features into a layers and then you can in future you can use them uh, in order to show it and hide it depending on your category okay so now let's move on to next question what is the expansion of igs step and dxf files so igf is nothing but initial graphic exchange specifications and step is nothing but standard for the exchange of product model data and dxf is nothing but data exchange format so these are the different kinds of file format uh, which are used to import and export of files from one application to another application or in the same application with a different versions okay so that's all we have in this uh, question okay and what is a constraint constraint limit a structural movement and represent mounts and supports constraint can be applied to a faces or edges so it also restricts the degrees of freedom so i have already made a video on assembly constraint how we how we are going to use an assembly constraint and uh, how it is going to restrict the degrees of freedom so for this question also i'm going to give a link in the description you can check that particular uh, 
video you will come to understand that okay so now the next question is what is top down assembly and what is bottom up assembly so in the top down assembly we create a different parts in the same assembly file and then assemble it there itself okay so in the bottom up assembly it is reverse so we are going to create a parts in a different way and then we are going to get them into a assembly using a constraint so now let's go to nx and you can see here there is an assembly so this is an assembly and suppose there is a latch and there are some components are there suppose if you need any of this particular say some screw is required here so what you are going to do is you will just so now i'll just go to assembly and i'll just create new component here and i'll just click ok so this is going to be a new file and i'll just make this as a work part and i'll just go here and i'll just ok on this particular face i'm going to create a screw so that is going to be a top down assembly okay suppose so if this screw is already created and if you are trying to bring this to assembly files by going to add component and you are going to open it from the model and then it is going to be a bottom up assembly okay so now what is the difference between the move and assembly constraints so in a move command components will be moved but the degrees of freedom will be still active but in the assembly constraint components will be moved along with the restricting the degrees of freedom so now you can see here this is the model so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a simple model here okay so i'm going to create a circle and finish the sketch and let me extrude this okay, okay. this is enough okay so now this is going to be my work part okay so this is a part and this is not completely constrained now you can see here this this is completely a white circle which is not constrained so now moving a component so this is the component and i'm going to move it from this is the move command and i'm going to move it from this location to this location say for example okay and i'll just click okay so by doing this the component is moved from this to one place to another place but it is its decrease of freedom will be still active so you can see here this is still in complete white circle so now i'll just do control z and instead of moving it i'll just assembly constrain it now so i'll just go to assembly constraint and here i'm going to go to concentric and i'm going to select this edge and this edge okay so i'll just click okay so now you can see here it has been become partially constrained so now when you do assembly constraint the degrees of freedom will be restricted whereas when you move a command degrees of freedom will be will not be restricted okay so this is going to be a last question so that's all in this videos guys so i'm going to come up with a lot of questions in the next video please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel thank you guys